Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. So, Chris Eubank Jr, where does he go next? His promoter Kala Sauerland was talking about Marata, Kel Brook maybe, Gennady Golovkin, even Demetrius Andrade, who Eddie Hearn did put forwards as a potential opponent for him. Now, out of those fights, who would we rather see him face? I think that Golovkin does stand out because we just know that that is going to be a contest where both of them do have a go at one another and an entertaining fight. Both have good chins, both have good power. I mean, Chris Eubank isn't going to hide from him. He's going to go looking for him. So that would be a good matchup, but it's not a fight I anticipate happening next. I believe that Kelbrook is a possibility, but unlikely I don't really see Kelbrook moving up to middleweight to face someone like a Eubank. So perhaps not that one. I would say that the Maratta fight is one that seems more likely and perhaps Demetrius Andrade, because Andrade does need a big fight. And while Chris Eubank Jr. isn't a mega fight, not like along the lines of a Canelo or a Charlo, but still it is a big fight for Andrade, bigger than his last one, and that is what Andrade needs. He's at that point in his career where he is undefeated, he is a world champion, but who has he fought and beat to make a claim to be number one in the middleweight division? That is important for him. Now, He's not on the right platform to go and face Charlo because Charlo is a difficult fight for him to make. I mean, it's a great fight if they can make it, but being on separate platforms, that does make it difficult. So perhaps he does have to go elsewhere in looking for his opponents. And I do believe that moving up to 168 could be an option for him as opposed to sticking around at 160 in the hope of getting a Charlo fight because I just think that he's closer to a Canelo fight than Charlo at the moment as things stand. So perhaps a Chris Eubank Jr. fight then moving up to 168 could be definitely a possibility for him. Having said that, more likely for Chris Eubank Jr. is the Murata fight because he is WBA interim world champion. Murata is WBA super champion in the middleweight division. So that does seem more plausible. The WBA regular title is vacant at the moment, but I don't want to see Chris Eubank Jr. fight for a vacant regular title. I would rather see him go all the way and challenge for the Super Championship against Murata because I believe that is a fight that he could win and then that does give him the ticket to perhaps an Andrade unification, perhaps a Charlo unification or even Gennady Golovkin. So imagine that, Murata in the summer, then Golovkin perhaps in November, December. Now that would be a good year for Chris Eubank Jr. if he's able to go Marcus Morrison, Murata and then Gennady Golovkin but when talking about a Gennady Golovkin fight, he needs to make a case for him to be put forward for that kind of fight because, let's be real, Gennady Golovkin is at that point in his career where he's only sticking around for the meaningful fights. So, Chris Eubank Jr. at the moment isn't really that fight for him, but it could be if he had the WBA Championship. So, therefore, if he is able to get the Murata fight, then he can build a case, okay, big unification with Golovkin. Golovkin might want to try and regain that WBA title, so therefore he will happily face Chris Eubank Jr. in a unification. So that title could be the key to him getting that long-awaited Gennady Golovkin fight. The Kelbrook one, I don't really see too much in that. The Andrade fight, possibly, but the most likely for me is Murata. Now if we look at his performance over the weekend against Morrison, it wasn't the most explosive, but it was a good fight for him, and I think that it was important he got 12 rounds to kind of work out where he is with his new trainer Roy Jones, someone of which he will listen to. He even said that, why is he going to listen to someone like, say, Nate Vasquez, who hasn't been there and done it, but Roy Jones has. So that is why he is willing to listen to Roy Jones Jr. And that seems to be the way to get the best out of Chris Eubank, and he will do going forwards. 12 rounds against Marcus Morrison, didn't get the stoppage because apparently he said he didn't want to, he wanted the rounds. But the jab was pretty good, a useful weapon from Morrison, he had good power as well. Stunned Chris Eubank Jr. here and there, didn't hurt him too badly but stunned him. The power was there, the jab was there so it wasn't really important for him to throw caution to the wind and do something silly in that kind of fight. Get the victory, get behind his jab, use all of the fundamentals he is learning with Roy Jones Jr. and move on. So that was important for him in that contest to get the victory, then move on to the next stage. And it could be a world title opportunity against Murata. And he did show his maturity in that Marcus Morrison fight in sticking to his fundamentals as opposed to going looking.
or his opponent. So guys, anyway, what are your thoughts on this? In my opinion, the most likely opponent next for him is a Murata fight. Possibly Kelbrook, possibly Demetrius Andrade, but I would put Murata at the top of that list. Anyway, guys, drop your thoughts on this in the comments below. Also, leave a like and grab that subscribe button. Thanks, guys.